Hi there, everybody. Welcome to Bridging the Gap. My guest tonight is Maria De Simone. Maria has been a professional counseling astrologer for five years. She serves as the vice president for the Long Island, New York chapter of the National Council for Geocosmic Research. She's pioneered the Insightful Astrology Online and Teleconference School, where she's taught hundreds of students the unique language of astrology. And, if that weren't enough, she holds a BA in Psychology and is certified through the Astrological Institute of Integrated Studies. Hi, Maria. Hi, Sam. How are you tonight? I'm great. How are you? I'm, I'm fabulous. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to come on. I've, we've sort of known each other through MySpace for quite a while, and, yeah. and I've always been really fascinated by astrology, and you're a pretty, pretty great woman, so I'm really happy to have you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to sharing more about my favorite language with your listeners tonight. Well, I'm looking forward to learning because I know so little about astrology. Okay. So that's why you're just, it's great for you to come aboard. And for those who'd like a free mini reading, Maria is also taking calls for questions and mini readings. She'll just need your full birth date. So give us a, a holler or let us know in the chat and PM. Feel free to PM me if you have any questions in there. Yes, it will be helpful to have your exact date, time, and location of birth for the most accuracy because, believe it or not, astrology is as much of a science as it is an art, and we need to get the scientific mathematical chart constructed before we can tap into the intuitive aspects of astrology. Right, okay. It's, it's really such a beautiful blend of, of art and science. So what is the significance of the sequence of planets that one is born under? Okay, well, astrology, to define it, it is basically the study of planetary patterns and how those patterns affect human development. The, the axiom as, be, as above, so below, it really does uh, apply, and it's such a, a truthful statement because the, the planetary energy... At the moment that you take your first live breath in a human body, the unique pattern in the sky at that time imprints onto you in your physical being. And what is so fascinating is that that energy cannot be duplicated for 25,000 years. And this is how unique your birth chart is. This is how unique you are. That energy that was reflected in the universe when you were born what it does is imprint personality characteristics onto you, your, your, your likes, your dislikes, your talents and abilities. It, uh, it illustrates your karmic lessons and your, uh, what might be holding you back, what fears you might have. It is an endless, endless map of, of, of knowledge to empower you and to help you grow into your soul. And this blueprint, understanding more about it, it helps you, it validates who you are, but it also helps you relate to other people in your life because once you learn more about the astrology of anybody else, you can understand what, what motivates them and why they act the way they do. It's, it's great in relationships. Yeah, that, that, that was another one of the questions that I had for you because I know, I, you know, the whole um, sun, sun, some signs drive and some signs there's friction with. I know myself, I've never met, I'm a Capricorn, um, that's my sun sign, but I'm, I'm almost nothing like a Capricorn and a whole lot more like my rising sign, which is Pisces. Um, and I know for myself, there's not been a Leo in my entire life that I haven't been challenged by. That you and I mean that in the nicest way. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there might be something else in your birth chart that, that makes it especially interesting for you to learn a lesson with a Leo. Maybe your Saturn is in the sign Leo, or, uh, or, or you have uh, some kind of configuration that would make it uh, interesting for you to be involved with, with Leo's. But you can't go by the sun sign. You, you said yourself, you're, you relate more to your rising exactly. sign, which is Pisces, than Capricorn. And that's often true because the rising sign symbolizes the doorway to your personality, and it is your first impression that you give other people. And the rising sign is how you come across, but it is a, a core part of your personality. The sun sign is what you're learning to become in this lifetime. 
Okay, so you're learning the Capricorn lessons of responsibility and oh wow, that makes so much sense. Goals. You're learning this in this lifetime, but you come across as the dreamy, imaginative, intuitive, <laughs> flighty, um, <laughs> it, it, sometimes escapist Pisces, and that's not Capricorn at all. Capricorn is all no. business, all rules. No. But the Pisces is is the dreamer, is the artist, is is the intuitive. And what's your moon sign? Do you know your moon sign? I know. You know, I've had my chart done actually by one of your students who's a friend of mine, Tori, and um, oh. I can't remember offhand. But okay. I know that was another thing that I was going to say to you is that astrology actually never made sense to me until I saw the whole chart. It wouldn't because most people think that it's just the sun sign. And astrology is the study of all of the planets and how they affect human uh, behavior. So the sun sign represents your vitality, your essence, your personality, your sense of self. But you're not taking into consideration anything else. There are there are eight, eight planets and the sun and the moon, and they all represent something different for you. The moon sign represents your emotions, your basic habit patterns. It's your most overwhelming need in life. More than anything else, you need to do your moon sign because it's what makes you feel safe. And okay. It's where you're so comfortable. So that's one of the reasons why when you meet someone in a relationship and their sun sign makes a really nice aspect with your moon sign, it is one of the the best aspects to have for a marriage or a long-term relationship because that person instinctively understands you and can support your basic needs. And there's a natural simpatico. Right. We have a caller. Uh, Fabulous. I understand Blaine is on the air with us. Hi, Blaine. Hi, Sammy. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Very good. Very, very good. Now, you like need your reading. To... Yes, I do. Okay, I was born October 20th, 1965 at 9.35 in the morning. Where? Where? At... What state? Montgomery, Alabama. State. Okay. I couldn't hear you. Can you say that again? I was born in Montgomery, Alabama. Montgomery, Alabama. All righty. So we have, it's October 20th, 1965, 9.35 a.m. in Montgomery, Alabama. And I'm pulling up your chart now, Blaine, and I see that you you're, you have the sun in Libra, which I'm sure you've, you've heard a little bit about what that represents and what that means. Have you ever had your birth chart done before, Blaine? No. Okay, so this is completely new to you. Your sun sign in Libra says that you are someone here learning a lot about relationships in this lifetime. You're here to learn how to relate, how to, how to find that balance in relationships without losing your sense of identity, without losing your sense of self. You're very much someone who can give so much of, of himself for the sake of a relationship that you ultimately can resent it. And that's one of the lessons for a Libra to learn. And I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. This, when, because Libra is a sign of relationships, this is all of your close personal relationships, whether it be a business partnership, whether it be your, your child, any, any close partnerships. But it will significantly affect you in your marriage or your, your long-term partnership. What's very interesting is that you have the moon in Virgo. And Virgo, the, now the moon is your most overwhelming need. Okay, This is where you feel safe and where you're most comfortable. So that Virgo moon tells me that you're a very, very efficient, practical person who can be extremely discerning. You demand perfection and you can be very critical of yourself. Uh, to a fault where you can be a little unreasonable in what you expect out of yourself and e- emotionally from from a woman you would tend to be attracted to someone who is very practical but also you can tend in your relationships I, I don't know if you've ever been accused of this but uh, as being critical or nagging or um, a little overbearing and if you have, if, if you've ever heard this from anybody, it's not that you are trying to be that. It's just that you see the potential for perfection so much and you strive for perfection so much that you can be relentless sometimes in your pursuit of that. It's, it shows up stronger for you because Pluto, which is the planet of 
uh, regeneration and transformation is aligned to your moon. And Pluto and the moon together 